Hello guys, Bingo Cat here, and I am back today with another operating systems comparison video. I have not done one of these in quite a while, so today I will be comparing Windows 98 Second Edition versus Windows 10 Pro 64-bit Anniversary Update Edition. This is actually the first video in two videos I am doing regarding Windows 98 versus Windows 10. The reason I am doing so is because I sat down to record the footage for this video, and when I was done recording, I realized that I had recorded 56 minutes of footage, so I decided to make it things easier to just split up the video into two videos. What are the differences between Windows 98 and Windows 10? Keep watching to find out. So just a little background knowledge for you guys, Windows 98 was released in 1998 and was designed to be the successor to Windows 95. Windows 10, on the other hand, was released to consumers in July of 2015. Now Windows 98, the original version wasn't that successful. The original version was filled with bugs. Let's plug it in and it's going to load in the appropriate drivers. You'll notice that this scanner build... Whoa. <laughs> Moving that right must, along. That must, be, uh, that must be why we're not shipping Windows 98 yet. Absolutely. A lot of people uh, just didn't like Windows 98, so Microsoft later released Windows 98 Second Edition in 1999 in an attempt to recidify some of these bugs. Windows 10, on the other hand, the uh, initial reaction was sort of mixed on both sides. While Windows 10 was praised for the features it added over previous versions of Windows, a lot of people didn't like the way Windows 10 was sort of pushed onto them by Microsoft. On Windows 7 and 8.1 for the first year after Windows 10 was out, Windows 10 was free, and if you owned Windows 7 or Windows 8.1, you could upgrade to it. But the way Microsoft tried to get you the update was by pushing out a notification to your computer, a really intrusive notification, and people just didn't like that. Heads up to anyone who has not yet installed Windows 10 because Microsoft has made an aggressive push. Microsoft pays $10,000 for an unauthorized upgrade. Ah, it, Microsoft recommends upgrading to Windows 10. What should I do? Windows 98 was designed exclusively for desktop and laptop computers, while Windows 10 was designed for use on computers and mobile devices. Now, extended support for Windows 98 was originally supposed to end at the beginning of 2004, but in order to give customers more time to migrate to newer systems, and due to Windows 98's popularity, Microsoft extended the Windows support date until mid-2006. Windows 10, on the other hand, was designed to be the quote-unquote last version of Windows, so its support lifecycle is really unclear. Right now, it's scheduled to end mainstream support sometime in 2020, and will have extended support end on October 14th, 2025. Windows 98 required a 66 MHz or compatible CPU with a math coprocessor and a Pentium processor was recommended, 16 MB of RAM with 24 MB recommended, at least 500 MB of disk space, a VGA or higher resolution monitor with a bare minimum of 640x480, a CD-ROM or DVD-ROM drive, and, or you could use a floppy install but it's really slow, and a Microsoft mouse or compatible pointing device. Windows 10's minimum requirements is a 1 GHz clock rate processor with 32-bit or 64-bit architecture, 2 GB of RAM, but 4 GB is recommended, a DirectX 9 graphics device with a WDDM 1.0 or higher driver, but it's recommended to have a WDDM 1.3 or higher driver, and then a minimum display of 800 by 600 pixels and a keyboard and a mouse or a multi-touch display. The minimum storage for Windows 10 is the for the 32-bit edition to have 16 gigabytes of storage and the 64-bit edition to have 20 gigabytes of storage. All right, let's go ahead and turn both virtual machines on. Might take a minute or two to boot up. All right, guys, Windows 98 has won the boot race to the login screen, that is. Windows 10 probably would have won if I wasn't doing updates. Let's go ahead and log into both operating systems. You want to see my super secret password for Windows 98? Amazing, right? All right, now let's go ahead and log into Windows 10. Now, I actually do have a real password for the Windows 10 operating system. 
All right, as you guys can see, this is booted to the default desktop in both operating systems. Now, the first thing you might not notice is that although the interface is sort of reskinned in Windows 10 from Windows 98, essentially, even though Windows 98 came out over 18 years ago now, the Windows 10 desktop is really similar to Windows 98. If you've used Windows 98, you can essentially get around the Windows 10 desktop. And if you've used the Windows 10 desktop, you can essentially get around the Windows 98 desktop. Let's go ahead and check out the start menu for both operating systems. As you guys can see, well, I mean, once again, it's functionally similar, but it is a little bit different in both operating systems. The Windows 98 start menu was designed to be sort of compact, and it can even be more compact than this. Watch this. All you have to do is click Show Small Icons and Start Menu, and bam, you have this teeny tiny start menu here. If you're on mobile, you probably can't even see this. The reason that start menu is so small in Windows 98 compared to Windows 10 is because two reasons. One is people had way lower resolution displays and way smaller displays back in the Windows 98 days. It wasn't uncommon to have a small 15 inch CRT monitor with a 640 by 480 resolution. So a smaller start menu would have been more appropriate. And the second reason is very few computers back in the Windows 98 days, in fact it might have been none at all, don't quote me on that, had touch screens. And so in Windows 10, they wanted to make these icons big enough to touch. You can't reduce the size of these icons in Windows 10 without reducing the size of the font for the entire operating systems. Now, Windows 98, it, it sort of divided the start menu into categories. First up, you have your programs category, and in it, you have accessories, which dives deeper in, into even more programs, like your communications program, entertainment, games, internet tools, system tools. Then you also got your favorites, which is just your uh, bookmarks and Internet Explorer. And then you have your documents, which just pretty much brings you to your recent documents in my documents folder. You have your settings, which sort of gives you a quick little link to all the settings that you can control on your computer or almost all the settings. Then you have fine, which basically brings you to search boxes where you can search files or folders or through your whole computer or on the Internet or through your contact list. And then, of course, there's a link to the help command here, and then the run command where you can run a program. Windows 10 start menu is designed to be, uh, in one word, customizable. Like a lot more customizable than Windows 98. In Windows 98, the main thing that you could do, from what I could tell, is make the start menu smaller and bigger. Windows 10, on the other hand, you can move like tiles around over here. Like these tiles are links to apps installed on your computer that are downloaded from the Windows 10 store. And the entire idea of Windows 10 apps is so they can automatically run in the background and they can automatically give you updated information through their tile interface. If I was logged into Twitter, tweets from my Twitter would be showing up here. I'm not logged into Twitter, so it's just showing some random tweet. And the news is showing up right here, along with some other stuff that's moving. So your most used apps are up here, and then you can pin your apps too. And then you have all the programs that you can use on your computer listed right here. So what if you wanted to access settings, you may ask? Well, luckily, there's a quick link to settings here. But unlike Windows 98, where you could find basically all the settings you could ever want to customize on your computer in one spot, and Windows 10, I hate to say it, but yet really have to dig around for settings if you want to find them manually. The main reason for this is, I've mentioned this in plenty of past videos, but Windows 10 has more than one place to change settings. Like Windows 10 has a control, traditional control panel along with their newest settings app. I feel like before they released Windows 10, they should have migrated all the control panel items to the settings app. Moving beyond the start menu for both operating systems, let's take a look at the most fundamental part of a computer today, the web browser. Take a spin, now you're in with the techno set. You're going surfing on the internet. Windows 98 came with Internet Explorer, and this is the latest version of Internet Explorer that you can run on Windows 98. If you go to About Internet Explorer, it tells me I'm running Microsoft Internet Explorer 6. And Internet Explorer 6 came out in 2001. Windows 10, on the other hand, is the first Microsoft operating system to come with the distinction of having two web browsers. So Windows 10, first of all, has a brand new or relatively new web browser called Microsoft Edge. 
only available exclusively for Windows 10. The entire goal of Microsoft Edge was pretty much to be as completely different from Internet Explorer as possible. Microsoft Edge uses a different layout engine, a completely different interface. The entire goal of Edge is to be fast, simple, and lightweight on battery. Now, Edge, I'll admit it's, I do like Edge. I think it's a pretty decent web browser. I wish it would come out with like an Edge, Microsoft Edge for Android or MacBook or something like that because I would actually consider using Edge as my default web browser, but there's no way I can sync my bookmarks and browsing history to Android without a use of some sort of extension, and it's just not as convenient as Google Chrome's or Firefox's sign-in feature. Now, for compatibility purposes, Windows 10 also includes Internet Explorer 11, which is pretty much legacy software by now. Internet Explorer 11, it's not bad for Internet Explorer, but it was released in late 2013, which means this web browser is three years old. As far as I'm aware of, it's not receiving like any layout engine rendering updates or anything like that. So within the next few years, stuff will probably start to display incorrectly in Internet Explorer, and it's not what I call a modern web browser anymore. But Internet Explorer 11 is a heck of a lot better than Internet Explorer 6 was. So let's go ahead and take a look at the different file explorers for both operating systems. They're fundamentally similar, but there's just minor interface changes. Windows 10 uses something called the ribbon view, where the, what the ribbon does is it separates up the different settings you can customize or use into tabs. Like you have your home tab here with your most commonly used options in File Explorer. You have the share tab here, so if you want to share to email or share with your friends or zip a file or something like that. Then you have your view options here, which pretty much customizes how the heck you can view File Explorer, like details view, the preview pane. So one thing that Windows 10 does that Windows 98 doesn't do is it comes with OneDrive integration. Now, if you're like me and do not use OneDrive, this is a pain because you have a OneDrive icon stuck here in File Explorer that you can't remove last time I checked unless you do a registry edit. And to me, that's really not user intuitive. Windows 98, despite being made 17 years earlier than Windows 10, does have a fundamentally similar file explorer. The thing I liked about the Windows 98 file explorer is that you could unlock the toolbar and move these icons wherever you want, which is something you can't really do in Windows 10 that much. And whenever I do this, I never actually wound up getting the toolbar back in the proper spot. Windows 10, unlike Windows 98, comes with a built-in antivirus. You could argue that Windows 98 didn't need an antivirus since this was the really early days of the internet and viruses and malware weren't that prevalent yet. But definitely later during Windows 98's life, like even just around 2000 or 2001, Windows 98 really should have had an antivirus on it. Windows 10 luckily includes a built-in free antivirus called Windows Defender. It's not the best rated antivirus, but it works. Last but not least, let's take a look at a little bit of the funner side of Windows 98 and Windows 10. Let's look at the default backgrounds. So you probably literally can't see the default backgrounds here in Windows 98. Windows 98 brings up this window here with the CRT monitor over here where you can change backgrounds to patterns such as black thatch, then there's like blue rivets, bubbles, then carved stone, and then there's all sorts of weird and interesting backgrounds. I think the none of these backgrounds are my cup of tea, but um, let's just go ahead and choose this circle background they use. Since Windows 98 is so much older than Windows 10, obviously the background looks a lot different. You can also tile the background. It looks kind of weird to me. I much prefer the stretch background. Windows 10, despite being newer, actually includes less backgrounds than Windows 98. Windows 10 only includes a few backgrounds by default. The one it has right here is the Windows 10 Hero wallpaper. And the other built-in one that I really like is I do like this under the sea shot. As you can see, it's much, much higher resolution than the background in Windows 98. Windows 10, you can also change colors of like the windows and whatnot. You don't really see it unless you choose this, which is show color on task bar start. An action center, but it's there. 
Windows 98 also allows you to change the window color. Alright guys, that was my rundown comparison of Windows 98 Second Edition versus Windows 10 Pro 64-bit Anniversary Update Edition. If you guys like this comparison video, please consider liking my video, and if you're new here, consider subscribing. I have lots of other comparison videos. Make sure to check out the second Windows 98 versus Windows 10 video when it's out, and I hope to see you guys next time. Goodbye!